everything about the culture was brand new to me. You know, ignorance does protect you sort of when you have no freaking idea what's going on. You're not worried about it. Like this has happened to me many times. Privet. So <laughs> Tucker Carlson definitely made a memorable shopping tr trip video in Moscow recently. It almost seems like a bit of a parody. Is he trying to encourage people to move to Russia from the US or is he actually making it so ridiculous in his commentary that it puts people off? And greetings from Odessa Mama, I'm here in Ukraine. I think giving you a perspective from someone who lives in Ukraine, obviously at the time of the Russo-Ukrainian war, it's gonna give you that different perspective in terms of whether you should consider living somewhere in this region, the region I call New Europe. And what are the advantages and disadvantages maybe, as that is what I do in my consulting practice. So let's get into the video and react to Tucker Carlson go shopping in Moscow. Boyekli. Experience. Before I react to Tucker Carlson's infamous or famous shopping trip, depends on your point of view, in Moscow, uh, let's just remind ourselves that Tucker Carlson was, or his former employers that fired him, Fox News, were sued for $787 million for defamation uh, because of some things that Tucker Carlson claimed when he was working for them on air. And actually previously, Fox News lawyers had successfully defended themselves from uh, similar legal problems. And they argued in court that the general tenor of Carlson's show should then inform a viewer that Carlson is not stating actual facts about the topics he discusses and is instead engaging in exaggeration and non-literal commentary. So basically, they successfully argued in court in a previous lawsuit that Basically, if you watch Tucker Carlson's show, it should be obvious that he's exaggerating, that it's not actually factually based. And yeah, I think this applies to this shopping trip video. So let's get into it. I'm excited about this one. So a long-standing feature, maybe the longest standing feature of Cold War propaganda in the West was the Soviet grocery store. No products, no choices, shoddily made things. Not sure why that was necessarily propaganda from the West, probably pretty true. And it wasn't actually propaganda, it was real. And you can look up the pictures on the internet if you want. So we thought it would be interesting to take a look at a contemporary modern day 2024 Russian grocery store, two years into sanctions. Here we go. All right, here we go. So I guess you put in 10 rubles here and you get it back when you put the cart back. This is new technology to Tucker Carlson. Perhaps he never goes shopping or you just never have these in the US. I think I was probably, I don't even think it was a teenager the first time I saw one of these in Europe. <laughs> and 10 rubles, by the way, is about 10 euro cents, 11 US cents. So pretty small amount of money to insert. And my understanding is the idea is not that you actually steal, it prevents you or dissuades you from stealing the shopping cart because shopping cart is worth a lot more, I guess, than the 11 cents. It's to encourage you to return it to a place so they don't have to pay people to walk around and push the trolleys in and collect them. So it's free, but there's an incentive to return it and not just bring it to your homeless encampment. I'm sure a homeless person who wanted to steal it would still steal it, probably smash it, smash up that little uh, case to get the 10 cents back anyways. But yeah, he wanted to throw that in. Okay, this is the uh, grocery cart escalator. <laughs> This is designed, I'm figuring this out now, where the wheels don't move, they lock on the grocery cart escalator. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> really, I don't think he goes shopping himself. I, I guess he has someone else do it for him. <laughs> Retail placement here is a little bit different. So far, this has said a lot more about the proclivities of Tucker Carlton's shopping habits than anything about uh, Russia or US. It's like walking through Macy's to get to Whole Foods. Okay, we've gotten through the perfume section to get to the grocery store. So we're gonna try and buy what a family of four would buy every week. Okay, so here you can see the sign. Uh, it's Auchan, 
uh, which is actually a French uh, hypermarket chain. So like a big supermarket, not high end. Um, I'm not sure if it's lowest of the low, but it will be definitely not more than a st very standard, if not maybe a little bit below standard, I would think in terms of the quality of the projects. But it's also interesting that he picked a French supermarket chain rather than a Russian one, one in Moscow. And we're gonna see what the selection is and we're gonna see what it costs. Now Russia is famous for its bread. Have you ever heard of the famous Russian bread? Because I never have. <laughs> in fact, I don't think the bread is very good at all in this region compared to other parts of Europe. And Auchan, of course, is a French hypermarket chain. So maybe the French are famous, obviously, for their boulangerie, their baguette. Uh, so maybe, maybe this has above average uh, bread for Moscow. Which is one thing I can assess pretty well. The low carb lifestyle has not swept Russia. Uh, thank heaven, because they, I mean, look at that. It's fresh too. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> come on. Mm. Unicorn and mini mills. Uh, again, maybe the guy hasn't seen fresh bread ever. Um, it's not particularly enticing looking to me. I would go to a specific bakery to get the freshest and the highest quality, but okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. These are, I guess the idea is that he gets it for a standard uh, American family of four. So I guess these are some kids cereals. Again, I'm not really sure how Russian these are supposed to be. Oh. You can see he's got some milk. He has some, he has a pumpkin there. I don't know if this is sugar or flour to be honest with you, but uh, it looks like a staple. So we should get it. It's a very good looking package. It's gotta be flour, right? I'm not, again, I don't know why he's buying flour. Is he gonna bake now himself? He already has the bread. And this is Russian wine. It's from Crimea. <sighs> oh, he, could he have picked wine from anywhere else <laughs> in the supermarket? Only he had to take the occupied Crimea uh, region. And uh, yeah, some very famous Ukrainian wine that's currently under our occupation, obviously. So let's see what he says. Which not only has the warm water naval base, but also is the source of most of the grapes. Uh, in this part of Russia for wine. So it's apparently pretty good. <laughs> Source of grapes in most of occupied Ukraine by Russia. Probably true, I don't know why, this seems to have a screw cap, I'm not sure it's actually the best example of Crimean wine. Uh, yeah, so Russia occupies Crimea since 2014, illegally under international law, but who cares about that for Tucker Carlson? He wanted to, uh, to show off some occupied Ukrainian wine that has been sold there. He could have picked another region of Russia and took some of the wine, I guess, from there. But no, Tucker wanted to, I guess, irk as many people as possible who support Ukraine by uh, falsely claiming that it's Russian wine. Cheese puffs. You check out of a grocery store and you've got gum, razor blades, and candy. Actually, they hide the razor blades because we steal them. Oh, so they... All is not well in Russia. They steal razor blades, apparently. But these are all, seem to be Western products. Mars, Twix, Snickers, Milky Way, Bounty, Gillette, Paul's Cough Drops, Mentos. It's pretty non-sanctioned to me, but what do I know? Yeah, sanctions don't seem to be working effectively if Russia can just, our Russians can buy the same products from the West, that's true. But maybe they're a little bit more expensive than they would be because I guess they have to send them through third countries to get to Russia. So we have potatoes, we have some bananas, we have some milk, we have the wine that probably is not very expensive since it has a screw cap. Um, some kids breakfast cereal, some flour, which again, I don't really know what he needs. There's some vegetables. I think I see some onions there, some oranges. Is that some lettuce, a pumpkin, ciabatta. So he has some ciabatta, he bought a lot of bread apparently. Not sure why he's eating a lot of bread, a lot of carbs. Got potatoes there. Yeah, I'm not sure if this would really feed a typical family of four in the US for one week. Seems a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, but then again, Tucker Carlson is, not, is, is quite slim. So maybe his family is also slim, which would not be typical in the US. Uh, so anyways, let's see where we go. Oh, there seems to be some chicken there as well, the last thing, is it? It was $104 US here. Okay, so that means we're right. It's about 100 US dollars. And that's when you start to realize that ideology maybe doesn't matter as much as you thought, corruption. So he thinks corruption is fine. I'm not really following him. If you 
take people's standard of living and you tank it through filth and crime and inflation. Okay, that sounds like Russia, right? Where is he going? And they literally can't buy the groceries they want. At that point, maybe it matters less what you say or whether you're a good person or a bad person. You're wrecking people's lives in their country. And that's what our leaders have done to us. And coming to a Russian grocery store, the heart of evil, and seeing what things cost and how people live, it will radicalize you against- Exactly, so he's gonna say, Vladimir Putin is against our leaders. That's how I feel anyway, radicalized. Western leaders are at fault? Does Tucker Carlson understand anything about economics? Or maybe he does, but he, does, he assumes his audience don't. Well, obviously you gotta account for purchasing power, local purchasing power. If the average salary in the US is substantially more than the average salary in, in Russia or in Moscow uh, where he's buying. Uh, you probably have to compare maybe the average salary in a similar city, so New York or where else could it be? Maybe LA would be a good example with Moscow because you know, Moscow's an enormous city. It's actually the biggest city uh, on the European continent. So yeah, and, uh, it's gonna be, so we're, it's gonna be five, at least five times higher salary on average. And then the bill is about a quarter. So yeah, Russians should be very angry, should be the message, or at least slightly angry that they're not able to spend as much of their budget on, or that they have to spend more of their budget on food than Americans do, right? But then you'd have to also account for quality and that's not very, very clear from this video. Uh, I think having lived in the States, the quality in the standard supermarkets is a big issue with fruit and vegetables personally. Um, but you know, you can't make this argument that because uh, the prices are lower for your shopping in Russia, that suddenly Americans should be launching a revolution to have it as, uh, as cheap. There are obviously other factors that go into the final price uh, in your shopping bills. So yeah, you should be comparing local purchasing power and how much things cost. And yeah, it's pretty clear that the average American is better off on that metric than the average Russian, uh, quite considerably actually. So his arguments would make sense if he's gonna say the Russian public should be outraged that they're not doing better. So the key is of course, to manage your revenues online, being an online content creator, like basically Tucker Carlson seems to be at the moment would be a good example of that. And then you can obviously make your money on, you know, US or British or EU basis in terms of it being way higher and then go and spend it in a country where the cost of living is lower. That is obviously what I talk a lot about on my channel. And yeah, that's how you take advantage of this. But if you are got a job where you gotta be in situ, you gotta work in the US and you can't uh, manage your revenues online, then obviously this argument makes no sense to you. Um, and that is a question I get a lot on my channel as people ask me, hey, I can't do what I'm doing remotely. What are my options to get work somewhere in this region? And then I'm like, yeah, but you're gonna have to work for the local wage. And that of course becomes very unattractive in terms of moving. So yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's, there's no sense to what he's saying here. Why would Americans, why should Americans be radicalized that if they lived in Russia, they would have to pay a lot more of their average uh, earnings on food Moscow's actually been one of the more expensive places, uh, so not really sure about this one quarter there, personally. I would say maybe half would be better uh, now with sanctions and the obviously big drop in the value of the Russian ruble versus the US dollar. But of course, you're gonna have problems then, as he alluded to it. You're gonna have to pay in cash, and uh, he doesn't allude in this video. He alluded afterwards in another interview, so you're gonna pay in cash, of course. Your cards aren't gonna work. You're gonna have all this hassle. You know, if you're trying to manage your revenues remotely in, say, in the US and then spend in Russia, you're probably gonna have problems um, being able to get it across and have to do creative things if you wanna spend your money. But say, for example, the region that I promote, which is what I call New Europe, and I'll put a video down below in the video description, also up in a card if you wanna know what I mean exactly by that. But it, briefly, it's the region between Germany and the new Russian Empire, we'll say, or the Revanchist Empire, so Russia and Belarus, uh, for now, so you got countries like Poland, the three Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. You got Ukraine here, you got neighboring Moldova, Romania. And basically, I would say that if you try to compare your lifestyle, how much it would cost to live a similar lifestyle, say in a big city in the US versus a big city here, probably at least half uh, cheaper, may even be a third. And for some things, you know, 
like rent, for example. I mean, here in Ukraine at the moment, if you want a short-term rental, it's obviously very affordable because there are very few tourists coming uh, with the Russo ukrainian war. Uh, then yes, it can even be like a fifth of the price. So um, you've got to do your research if you are thinking of this and figure out, okay, which countries are going to provide me the best quality of life if I'm able to manage my revenues remotely. Uh, and there are a lot of factors going to that, which is why I have consulting. So I'll put a link to that down below if you want to have some personalized advice about which countries should be considering and how to set up your lifestyle for this region, New Europe, which to be clear, excludes Russia. In summary, what can I say? I mean, it was entertaining because it was a little bit cringe, a lot of it, especially the beginning with the shopping trolley, I know in another video he goes into the metro and he talks about how beautiful it is. I mean, if some of the metro stations are uh, quite beautiful in the center of Moscow, I've been to Moscow myself, um, but they were of course made a huge expense uh, with terrible labor conditions for the prisoners of wars who uh, were used to build them. And the average metro station in Moscow it's arguably not any nicer than the average one in New York City anyways. And of course, you have a few beautiful ones in New York City that have been in personally, like uh, Grand Central Terminal Station in New York is also very beautiful. So uh, you can make a similar video and go there and say, look, everybody should be radicalized that they don't have this beautiful metro station in their country. But uh, yeah, you can always pick and choose and edit things up and you know be uh, a polemist and just argue irrationally for one side or without really much justification. Yeah, I would think uh, fruit and veg, uh, you gotta pick the country. It does vary a lot in the region as well. Here in Ukraine, bread basket, uh, potentially all of Europe. So uh, we have particularly good uh, fruit and veg here. And uh, in some parts of New Europe, it's as good. In some other parts, the soil isn't as good and it's not gonna be as good value. So, um, but I would think just overall, in terms of going to the supermarket, uh, I've also been Shocked the first time I went actually here in Odessa, the supermarket, and realized, wow, for the produce I'm getting, it's super cheap. And you can even go then on to like the farmer's market, which is very common here. You're going to have them everywhere in the region. And it's going to be like just farmers coming in um, or just people who aren't necessarily farmers, but they happen to grow st um, some potatoes or some fruit and veg, whatever it is, or, you know, the, when the strawberries are in season or big thing here in southern Ukraine are the watermelons and the melons when they're in season and you just you know you can even bite them off the, the side of the road like you can do for a lot of seasonal fruit and veg in a lot of parts of the world and it's going to be incredibly cheap it's going to be like 10 percent of buying in the supermarket in the U.S. so yeah that is something that I definitely enjoy uh, just to re-emphasize I was not impressed by the quality of fruit and veg in the U.S. outside of Whole Foods uh, when I used to live there uh, yeah, it's pretty shocking for me, the average quality. So that's also something you need to take into account. Uh, I wouldn't be going to the standard supermarket probably myself in the U.S. Uh, yeah, having seen what I saw there. I думаю, что ваш Карлсон, когда я говорю ваш, имею в виду, что он представитель вашего журналистского цеха, опасный человек. И вот почему. Потому что я-то, честно говоря, думал, что он как раз и будет вести себя агрессивно и будет задавать эти так называемые острые вопросы. Я не просто был к этому готов, я этого хотел, потому что это давало бы мне возможность также остро отвечать, что, на мой взгляд, придало бы определенную специфику всей нашей беседе. Но он избрал другую тактику. So there you see that afterwards Vladimir Putin was not particularly a big fan of Tucker Carlson, in spite of Carlson's attempts to put a move to Russia slant on his reporting from Moscow. But Tucker Carlson has safely left Russia, so he doesn't need to worry anymore about being too close to windows or maybe what's in his tea going forward. That's a probably good call to leave and not relocate to Russia right now especially when you look at the case of, say, Evan Gersovich, an American journalist, who basically has been held for ransom of an exchange by Putin. That was even clear in the interview between Carlson and Vladimir Putin, the Russian leader. Not a super spy, and everybody knows that, and he's being held hostage in exchange, which is true. With respect, it's true, and everyone knows it's true. So maybe he's in a different category. Maybe it's not fair to ask for you know, somebody else in exchange for letting him out. Maybe it degrades Russia to do that. 
Ну, вы знаете, а, ну, можно как угодно говорить, что такое шпион, что не шпион. You know. Владимир Путин would love to be in charge of as well. But, and I didn't know this before I came down, I've actually got a little stand here about Latvia and NATO, 20 years together, 20 years as a deterrent to Russian aggression. I'm in Riga, the capital of Latvia, here on the shores of the Baltic, not the Black Sea, but the Baltic Sea, unlike Odessa, which of course looks out towards Crimea. And just finished up a week here with one of my clients living the in-person experience because I am your insider. I am not shocked when I see those tro shopping trolleys with the coin <laughs> coins that you put in or by the fact that they don't roll on the escalators because I'm used to being around here. I'm also not shocked by the difference in the prices if you go to a supermarket. Although here in Riga it is not as cheap as you're going to find. Uh, there's not going to be that difference in prices that you would find, say, in Odessa or in Kyiv or in Ukraine right now, because Ukraine is probably, I would say, in my experience, probably the best value for money. Obviously, it has other downsides with the war. Riga is a very good option. Many of my clients are considering coming here, buying property and settling in Latvia or another country in the Baltics to enjoy that cost of living differential and other things like a bit more freedom that they get here compared to back home in the US. And my clients are almost entirely single men, so they are not oblivious to the big differential in the respective dating markets. As a single guy here, women are in particular slim. I did reference that earlier with Toka Carlson. Actually, he is slim himself, not the typical uh, stereotype that we have for America where obesity and overweightness is a major issue. That is not the same here, basically in this entire region, which I'm dubbing New Europe. So countries like Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Poland, Ukraine, Moldova, Romania, and other countries in the region. Obesity is not a big issue, and that is great if you are a single guy here. The women in general are a bit more feminine and slim and trim so it is a place to consider you can come with me the insider for the region as i am known as by my clients and unfortunately we have not been living the in-person experience for almost two years over two years now to ukraine because of the russo ukrainian war i am helping guys a bit with residency in ukraine and buying real estate if you are one of those guys and you're interested in that then down below in the description to this video is a link to my consulting but in general, I, I am helping my clients with alternatives to, say, Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, also a place that I don't recommend. Moving to the moment, Belarus, pretty sad what has been going on in the last few years in that country. The best of Belarus is basically left, and they're being replaced by Chinese and Russians. So, uh, yeah, a place I wouldn't recommend moving to either. But these other great options, like here in the Baltic states, where you have fantastic infrastructure, you still get to enjoy that better value for money. If you're a single guy, which is nearly my entire audience, then the dating options are way superior to back home. And yeah, you even get a bit more freedom, I think, in general in this region than you do if you are in, say, North America, uh, where that has become a little bit more of an issue in the last few years. We all remember what happened during COVID. Uh, I was actually in Ukraine at that time and a country like Ukraine was probably the most free almost uh, during that entire two year period. So it just depends. It's not the same in every country. You have to, of course, be a bit more discerning about which one to come to. But with me, you get my, you get access to my encyclopedic knowledge of over 10 years in this region. I speak the local languages in general in these countries and I've been bringing my clients to uh, countries like Poland, Warsaw, the capital, where there are massive, massive communities, diasporas of Ukrainians and Belarusians in particular. Also, not just here in Riga, which is a country with some of the tallest and blondest people in Europe. It is the land of the leggy blonde, great nightlife. But if you show up here as a tourist, it is hard to get access to everything, so better to be with your Irish boy here and you will get that special 
VIP, local celebrity like treatment. Also been going to crazy Chisinau in mad Moldova, as I call it. Absolutely great place, particularly in the summertime to go and enjoy. Uh, probably the place that's got the most, that has the most similar culture to say Ukraine that you can go to at the moment without the risk of a Russian rocket attack. And I've also been bringing clients to Almaty, the almighty, and also to the capital of Kazakhstan, Astana, all the way over on the Central Asian steppe. It is mainly a country in Central Asia, but there is a tiny bit that's in Europe geographically, and cities like Astana and Almaty are about 15% European, 85% Asian. So you get a lot of friendly Kazakhstanis. And in particular, Almaty is a beautiful city. It has stunning mountains, lakes, canyons. It's really, in terms of its natural beauty, incredible. So definitely a place that is quite interesting to consider for relocation for say three to 12 months per year. And if you think that you are a good fit for the in-person experience with me, the insider for the region, then down below is a link to my application form. It is by application only. Before you do that, if you're new to the channel, go and check out a few different playlists I'm gonna put up now on cards, also down below in the description to the video. They are a link to my Vodka Vodcast uh, series, well over 50 hours of content there. and. In that, I dive deep, deep, deep into the mindset of the people in this region overall. So probably flick around through them. Don't have to sit down <laughs> for over two days straight and watch every minute of the content there. Be a little bit discerning and selective about it. And the second playlist is going to be a series of vlogs for the cities that I am currently and in the past bringing clients to. Give you a bit more of a sense to the flavor of the in-person experience. And thirdly, you have my series of, it's like tutorials for dating the uber beautiful women of this region, the nines and tens. This is the part of the world that in my opinion has on average the most beautiful women. And go check that out if you're unfamiliar with the culture here because it will save you a lot of time and heartbreak to understand the mentality of the local women here. So, if you think that you're a good fit for the in-person experience, in the words of Canuck, ice hockey legend, Wayne Gretzky, a man of Ukrainian, Polish, and Belarusian origins, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So, down below is a link to the application form, and it could be you with me having a phenomenal time and getting ready for a potential relocation here in a city and that is the police. Hopefully they are not after me. But on that note, I will say bye-bye from Riga, Latvia. Not sure what's going on there. Has MP, is that military police? I guess so. But I think it's more a foreign dignitary. Anyways, <laughs> I haven't been guarded away here in Riga as I filmed. Ciao, ciao. Sar experience.